Welcome to Massive Late Fee, and now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone, welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark, with me as always is my groovy girlfriend, Carol. How you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? I'm much spend a good week here. It is June 14th, 1997. It is. I predict a short episode today, Carol. It was a really bad movie, Mark. I don't have... Yeah, it was your idea, Carol. Well, I figured that watching, you know, Speed 2 would be... Cruise control, by the way. It would be bad enough to make fun of, like the Leprechaun movie. Yeah, I was thinking about the Leprechaun movie today and how fun that was to make fun of. <laughs> right? So that ha- that was my hope for Speed 2, but unfortunately, it wasn't just bad, it was boring. If you've been uh, following the ratings and judging by our movie choice, we haven't. <laughs> this has not been getting rave reviews. No. Uh, so Speed 2 Cruise Control, get it, because they're on a cruise. Uh, the movie's so bad that Keanu Reeves didn't want to come back right? for it. Like, His she, career's not doing much right now. She talked about how they broke up. Her and Jack. He bought her pepper spray for her birthday or an anniversary or something. She thought it was perfume. <laughs> she's an idiot. Right? <laughs> yeah, so... This movie, I I would say Sandra Bullock is the quote-unquote star of this movie because she's obviously much more of a star now. Mm -hmm. And Jason Patrick is sort of the second banana. That's her boyfriend, the cop. But The second banana? Yeah, you know, like second, the sidekick character. I've never heard this, uh, this terminology before. But instead, it's written so that the man does all the action stuff and she's just the damsel in distress again yeah and it's it that hurts the movie more than anything she doesn't have any kind of agency in this film whatsoever i don't i mean like she kind of was like helping at least you know yeah she's helping but she's not she's not her actions aren't moving the plot forward okay yeah that's true his actions move the plot forward the villain's actions move the plot forward She's just, you know, there to vamp. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because Sandra Bullock is maybe the only good thing about this movie. Yeah, she really, like, she is so, like, charming and cute and... Effortlessly charming and just a very good actress. Yeah, so, like, the beginning of the movie, before the crazy boat shit starts happening, was actually kind of enjoyable because it was almost like watching like a romantic comedy with Sandra Bullock. And that's and I would have preferred if this movie had just been a romantic comedy between her and Jason Patrick. Yeah, I would have loved to see how it would have gone if they'd just been on the cruise. Her dealing with all the the like the demons of her past or whatever, her relationship with Jack and getting all angry about Jason Patrick, essentially lying to her. I mean, this doesn't seem like a good relationship. No. We're meant to believe it's a good relationship, but they've been dating for seven months. He's a cop. He told her he's a cop, but he said he worked at the beach. Well, apparently that's how they met, and then maybe she made an assumption that that was his primary job. She said that he said that's what he did. And he said, well, sometimes I fill in for my friend for the, the beach thing. But instead, he's on the whatever. I think she's... SWAT team. Yeah, but she calls it the suicide team, I think. Suicide or squad like or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess she had told him that she didn't want to be like with a cop who had their life on the line or dangerous jobs or whatever. Like Jack. Right. And, and I, I assume that this was supposed to be Keanu Reeves, Jason Patrick's role, and Keanu Reeves didn't want to do it. And they were like, okay, well, let's let's do some rewrites and we'll yeah. put in a little drama. Because they don't really follow up on that a ton. What do you mean? It's mentioned a couple times, but it's not like it's not a through line. Through, that he lied? Yeah. It's not a through line through the movie. Like, it's not something they have to overcome 
there's no real arc with it. It's just something he did. It caused friction. The end of the movie, they're together anyway. Hmm. I guess. So it, it, it looks like, to me, a rewrite. Yeah, it might have been. I, I certainly don't blame Keanu Reeves for not wanting to do the movie. Even though his career is, like I said, not, not great right now. But would you do this movie? No. I, mean, I don't know why Sandra Bullock agreed to do this movie. Right? Maybe she needed to pay for something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, I need the paycheck. Yeah, um, like, uh, like B- Betsy Palmer style. Betsy Palmer famously decided to play the role of uh, Mama Voorhees in uh, in Friday the 13th because she needed uh, money to buy a car. Her car, oh, bro- wow. her car broke. <laughs> That's funny. She agreed to do it. She used to be on, you know, like, not to tell the truth and shows like that. Panel shows in the 50s. Okay, so this particular movie mm-hmm. has a villain. Willem Dafoe. And being very Willem Dafoe. <laughs> he plays crazy well. He does play crazy well. They need Willem Dafoe because otherwise you're just root for the villain. <laughs> I mean, think about think about the villain's plan. The villain, Geiger is his name, played by Willem Dafoe, works. It, it, it's a rehash of the first movie. Mm-hmm. Dennis Hopper worked for the cops. They let him go. They fired him or whatever. Gave him a gold watch. Sent him on his way. No money. He's pissed off. He wants to get back at them, right? Mm-hmm. This guy worked designing the computer systems for the cruise ships uh got fired well he got because fired he got sick yeah because apparently electro like com- working around computers I, I mean i'm scared now that my whole house <laughs> is an electromagnetic field because i have a computer i'm sure it's not i think this movie is bullshit and i guess it causes wilson's disease which is a buildup of copper in your blood but there's treatments for Wilson's disease, but apparently this is an untreatable kind of Wilson's disease, and the doctors gave him like two years to live, and he's got leeches that that he sticks on his body to leech his blood, and he takes a bunch of medicine to, I don't know how medicine helps get the heavy metal, like, he needs to go through one of those machines, I can't remember what they call them, but you can get hooked up to a machine that, that filters the... Heavy metal, like for heavy metal toxicity, it gets the heavy metals huh. out of your blood. Interesting. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. Is it like dialysis? It's a bit like dialysis, but it's called something different when it's for heavy when they're doing it for heavy metals. Okay. But yeah, it's 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 similar. But you can do that, and I guess leeches apparently do it too. I don't I don't know how they just take the copper out and leave the regular blood. It doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense. But maybe just blood. I guess bloodletting used to be a. a treatment for heavy metal toxicity yeah. that actually worked because when your body like replaces it with blood it's not replacing it with copper filled blood right so it takes a while for the copper to get back into the bloodstream so anyway uh so i guess that makes a bit of sense but so he worked for this cruise line gets fired and has the plan of okay i'm gonna take over the cruise ship I'm going to get everybody off. I'm going to evacuate all the passengers, all the crew. Because that was super easy to do. Well, that was his plan, though. And he got almost everyone off, except for the fact that the cop was like, oh, what do you, that guy's, you know, whatever. And he wants to try to stop it. That guy's whatever. Okay. That's what he said. <laughs> that was his, that was his, his lines. But I mean, like, one, at least one of the boats, like, kind of like crashed into the ocean. And... But that wasn't his plan. It was because they fucked it up. But I mean, do you think those people died? Yeah. Um. But uh, but his plan was to get everyone off the boat, rob the jewelry, and then dock the boat in the harbor. Get on that plane. Dock the boat. Yeah, I mean, set like slow the boat down. He's complete. Think about if his plan if his his plan went to fruition. Everyone's off the boat. It's just him. So he's not going to crash it into a wall. He only did that because there were people still left on the boat trying to stop him. What he's going to what he would have done is slow the boat down to to zero 
anchored it, got into his plane, and flew out of there with the the money. Are you sure? Yeah. Because they turned the boat. The boat wasn't even an originally going to where they ended up at the end of the movie. That's where he was going to go. He had a plane there. Oh, that's true. Um, but they, so that's, that was his plan. His plan wasn't to kill anybody. It was to get everyone off the boat, steal the diamonds, stop the boat, and then get on the plane and leave. That was his plan. Incorrect. He killed the captain before okay. anything else happened. And that, like, I, I know I was going to mention that. I knew you were going to bring that up. Yeah, he kills Bo Svensson, uh, Walking Tall Zone, who plays the captain of the ship. That's written in there to just, that's like thrown in just to make him a villain. There's no reason for, for that character, as written, to hold a grudge personally against this captain and want to kill him. And he kills him in just a gruesome, like, and then he, like, pushes him in the water. Like, like he takes a ballast or something like that and, cr- like, starts crushing him with it. And then pushes him into the water to get sucked up by the propellers. But there's no reason. Like, they wrote that in, one, to have an action scene, and two, just to make him seem cruel. Why do you want this guy to not be the monster that he is? I'm saying that... It's poorly written. If you want this guy to not be sympathetic, you wrote it bad. Like, he should have... He should have been... Like, if he was willing to kill everyone on that cruise ship, if that was his set intention, you know... Dennis Hopper fucking killed a bunch of people. This guy went out of his way to try to not kill people. Okay. It just doesn't make any sense. And he... Like, all the, oh, there's fire in there and everything. They're, these are bombs. I'm going to kill everyone. And the the police officer points out they're not, it's just smoke. Mm-hmm. It's it's an illusion. Because he didn't, he could have made bombs, but he didn't want to kill anybody. See, they it's an incongruent writing thing. They write a guy, they want to write the villain to be sympathetic, but they go, they went too far in the sympathetic direction. And then they didn't, they realized, I think, and they're like, well, what are we going to do? Just have him fucking kill Bo Svensson. <laughs> Let's hire Bo. You know, I've always wanted to kill Bo Svensson on film. Let's hire him and, and we'll, we'll have him crushed by part of the boat. But then at one point, too, he, you know, takes a- Annie as a hostage. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's not good. That yep. doesn't make me like him. Well, he went full maniacal at that point. And there was no point in that either. Like, having Correct. her as a hostage didn't help him, and it, it really hindered him yes. more than anything. Correct. <laughs> yep. Because the cop was after him to get his girl back. I don't think he would have been after him mm-hmm. if he just had the jewels and got on his plane. And she threw the jewels into the ocean. Yeah. Yep. And then they made him crash his plane, and he died. So. Yeah, it was Chekhov's uh, oil tanker. They point out the oil tanker in whatever. And then they're like, well, 15 minutes later, it's got to fucking explode before the end of the movie. <laughs> so they made it explode, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that it explodes. A plane crashes into a, a part of the spire at the top, and that makes it, an oil tanker explode. Are oil tankers that fragile? Someone drops a coffee cup on the <laughs> fucking deck and it's, oh no! The whole thing explodes. I was wondering why he was laughing. But I guess somehow he knew it was going to explode too. Everyone knew it was going to explode. The guy in the speedboat that was helping out Jason Patrick knew it was going to explode. Inexplicably. Who, by the way, is the same guy as in the first movie. Keanu Reeves takes his fucking car yeah. and destroys it. But he has moved to the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Bought a hundred fifty thousand dollar speeder boat, yeah, and recently bought a condo on the shoreline that uh, that presumably was destroyed. And he's like LAPD, and he's like, "What are you doing here?" Right. I mean, that was kind of funny, I guess. The LAPD but... destroys another black man's life, <laughs> all the way in the Bahamas. But yeah, so one of the things, for, like wild. You kind of mentioned it. Wildly misfirings of comedy. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but 
none of the comedy hit at all for no. me. No, like, and, and, like, the ridiculousness at the end of the movie, like, all the over-the-top mm-hmm. shit, like, that's not funny to me. I don't know if it's funny to some people, but, like, and, like, the acting wasn't good from no. from all the extra people yeah. who were supposed to be terrified or upset. Like, they're just like, oh, no, my house. Like, did you really pay them for that? Like, Right. There's a couple having sex and the, the boat tears through. By the way, they're dead. I'm sure that's supposed to be funny, but like, how how did they survive that? Right, and, and then there's a woman that's like on the phone. I can't hear you, and then she looks up and just whoa, rolls her eyes. It's the worst kind of comedy. Like, it's just terrible. Hey, what about that little boy? What about him? He's dead too, right? Like, Probably. they didn't show him being alive. They didn't show that like, the boat stopped right before. No, they, they they just you know showed the boat ramming through everything well they show so here's the thing they show the little boy and his mom and the real estate agents and then the boat starts tearing through and they show them kind of on opposite sides as the boat continues to tear through so they're alive for part of it but then the boat goes all the way through and we never cut back to them so i have to presume they died i can't imagine they could have survived that or they're just buried in rubble somewhere right yeah, it's not traumatized I mean, either way. This is like not a funny scenario. A cruise ship cutting through a coastline is not good. Well, yeah, and it's also they juxtapose. They're going through. So they're. I mean, you've seen the movie, or if you haven't seen the movie, don't see the movie. Yeah. But he sets he sets them on a cruise on a, a cruise control. He sets them on a crash course for a tanker. They end up being able to turn the boat somehow and. They ram into the shoreline in the Bahamas and crash through a bunch of shit. But as they're going through the shore, as they're going through like the shallow water with all the sailboats and the speedboats out there, and they're killing people there too. By the way, oh yeah, I mean they're they're glossing over it, but they're crashing into these boats. People are trying to jump off, but like there's no way they're not crushed, right? Yeah, or they're just getting like sucked into like propellers and stuff, right? And it, ju- it juxtaposes that. It, it goes from that back to one of the guys on the bridge going, this is helping. We're slowing down. <laughs> yeah. it's like, that's not funny. Or like, <laughs> just the way it's delivered and everything, It's it just, it doesn't work. No, and it, it makes him sound like a moron. Yeah. And then, like, when he's talking about how many knots, right? So, like, they're down to five knots, four knots. Then he gets to zero, and, and like, two different times they caught to him going, zero. Mm-hmm. Who who would do that? I don't know. It's just ridiculous. I I don't know if it's supposed to be like he's lost his mind or whatever, <laughs> but like it right. it doesn't work. No. And there's so much about this that doesn't work. There's some jokes at the beginning about. But first of all, Colleen Camp used to be famous, right? Like I know she wasn't in a ton of stuff. But she used to be famous, gorgeous actress, and she's reduced to blink and you'll miss her in the sequel to fucking Speed. She's one of the ones where she's married to that guy, the fat guy with the big mustache. Okay. She takes her dress off at one point uh, because they're like, oh, we got to block these vents because they think it's poison gas. By the way, that's never that's never brought up again. I don't think it was poison gas. I just think they were wrong. Remember, they get trapped in a little, like, area, and Annie's got to f- find a chainsaw. Oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, Cut yeah. them out. Yeah, there was just so much craziness throughout that this was, movie. That was supposed to be funny, too, before everything goes wrong. When they're at dinner, and they're talking about, like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, f- you're conditioned to think that fat's bad for you, but fat's actually good. Fat doesn't make people fat, and it's, you know, you should should eat fat. And they're all fat people. <laughs> but it's like, and that's supposed to be funny, and it's like... No, it wasn't it's funny. not funny. There, like, and nothing in this movie is funny. Even, By the way, fat has uh, nine calories per gram, and protein and carbohydrates have four calories per gram, so... Okay. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat fat. You should eat fat. You need fat. But they're, the, those three macronutrients, you need all of them. And fat does i mean it's a little easier to turn fat into fat in in your body it is 
It's harder to turn protein into fat, but for your body. That's why protein is more metabolically active. It takes more calories to, to burn protein. <laughs> is, okay. everybody, is everybody entertained by this? Thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Phillips. Anyway. Who's that? That's not my name. We don't tell people my last name. <laughs> anyway. Uh-huh. As I was trying to say, at the beginning of the movie, sure. she's taking a fucking driving test because like, she doesn't want to take a boat bus again or whatever. <laughs> She's going to have to take a boat again. <laughs> yeah, boy, speed three, she's going to be taking a boat test. <laughs> but she's doing terrible. And, mm-hmm. like, she gets into an accent and stuff, and it's like, that's supposed to be funny, too. She's not paying attention, and she's talking about her past relationship. She's doing exposition while yeah. she's crashing into things. It's ridiculous. And there's no way that a driving instructor would have let her continue to, con- you know, drive with like all the shit she was doing. Correct. She caused many accidents. Yeah, and it's Tim Conway completely wasted. Comedian Tim Conway is just sitting there like, mm, she didn't do good. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It's fucking Dorf on Golf. You don't know Dorf on Golf? I don't. Tim Conway uh, does this thing where he like goes on his knees and puts a... Uh, <laughs> Not like that. Oh, really? Now puts a pair of shoes on his knees to make him look like a super short guy. Okay, and gives like golfing tips. It's, wow, it's not funny, but it's no, supposed to be funny. Doesn't sound. Funny. He used to be on the Carol Burnett show. Okay, Grandpa, thank you. Full of all that uh, good old fashioned information. She used to tug her ear as a signal to her grandmother who raised her. What the fuck? What is happening? <sighs> Tim Conway's wasted in this movie. So the police the officer this movie were wasted. The police officer boyfriend, J- uh, Jason Patrick, wants to propose to Sandra Bullock. That's why he has surprised her with this trip. Yeah, a cruise to the Bahamas. That's the most interesting thing I think in the movie is that you know they have this relationship. She finds out he's lying to her, and then he takes her on the. You know, cruise and wants to propose. And they do nothing with it. Nothing. I mean, at the end of the movie, he proposes and she says yes. But it's like all the drama that was possibly there, they don't really work through it. But she still says yes. And why? Why did she say yes? Yeah, I don't know. And it makes, see, that's what I think it was supposed to be Keanu Reeves. It makes a lot more sense as a, like a culmination of their of their character arcs together. Mm-hmm. If they get together at the end of the first movie and they get engaged at the end of this movie. Yeah. That makes more sense, but I think the writers were really counting on the chemistry between Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, (laughs) and they didn't get that. Instead, they got dead-eyed Jason Patrick. (laughs) Oh, well. And they were like, let's make it a cruise ship so we can get a free trip to the Bahamas out of this. There you go. That's not a bad idea. We should write a movie that takes place in the Bahamas. So the winners of this were the writers that got to go to the Bahamas. Right. Um... I guess the actors and crew, because they got paid, they're <laughs> winners. The losers are uh, the audience right? and the environment, <laughs> because that, that, that oil tanker t- explodes and just devastates the fucking uh, wildlife in that area. Right. I don't know. It's a shitty movie. It really is. It should not have been made. There was just so much wrong with it. And, by the way, there's a part in this movie where before everything goes down, Jason Patrick and Sandra Bullock are at some fancy dinner because it's a cruise. Right. And there's a little, like, I guess she's supposed to be a 14-year-old girl, but she's deaf. She looks like she's 10. Yeah, she looks young. And he's making eyes at her. Like, I think he thinks he's being, like, cute and funny with the little girl. I wanted to call somebody. I wanted to call Child Protective <laughs> Services or something. Right? And she, like, obviously likes him. And she is deaf. And they're, like, signing to each other from across the room. It seems yeah. really weird for this child and this adult man to be connecting. <laughs> yeah, they're signing. And, he, and uh, Sandra Bullock's like, what are you doing? And she, he goes, uh, she wants to know if you're my sister. <laughs> yeah it was weird and at one point she says that she loves him and she's she'll turn 15 next next month right 
And um, and she got yelled at by her parents because apparently the well, dress she didn't, she didn't hear it though. Right, the dress she was wearing, <laughs> they, her mom said was not appropriate without the jacket. She took the jacket off when she mm-hmm. saw him. Right. Now, first of all, honey, taking that jacket off doesn't do anything because you're a little child. Um, yeah. that was weird. And then she just wanders off because her parents are like, she's mad at them or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking the whole time, like who would let their child wander away? But then we find out she's 14. I guess. I still don't know. How I'd let my 14 year old wander away. Yeah. It's fucking weird. The whole it's thing was creepy. really weird. Yeah. It's a really creepy subplot to have. Yes. The 14 year old child with the crush. It would have been better if she was like eight. Honestly, it'd be yeah. less creepy because then it would just be like, oh, he's being sweet to the little girl. Right. Yeah, if it was clear that it, it needed to be more clear that he wasn't attracted to right. her. Right, yes. I don't know if this is a Jason Patrick problem <laughs> or if this is a problem with the script, but it was not clear that he wasn't attracted to that uh, prepubescent girl <laughs> or postpubescent, whatever she is. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. She looked very young. Yeah, but, but yeah, it was that was not good, and so much of this was not good. Yeah, the only good thing in the movie again was Sandra Bullock. Yeah, and like like you said, I think some of the the stuff they set up, the relationship drama stuff, I thought was interesting, and it would have been better if just nothing happened. Yeah, because the action stuff somehow they made it boring. I mean, you wouldn't think, you know, right. ships exploding and hostages being taken. Like, you'd think that'd be really exciting. It was not. No. I don't know how they did it, but they fucked it up. Yeah, it wasn't good. So, I wouldn't recommend it. Don't go see it. Do not. Well, that is the episode. I've got nothing else to say about this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, we're Next gonna... week we're seeing something, but we're seeing another Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, we are? Yeah. What is it? It's called Face Slash Off. Interesting. So, I don't know. We'll see. Well, hopefully it's better than this. One of your favorites. Johnny Travolta is in it, too. Yeah, I like both Nicolas Cage and John Travolta, so uh, it should be good. I know you like Johnson Travolta. <laughs> One of your favorites. All right, so you can write us at latefee1994 at AWOL.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Uh-huh. And tell your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.